demonstrate today the uh, rebuild procedure for a gasoline QR. We've been using these in our air AC systems for about three years now. They've proven to be robust uh, water piston style suspenders and uh, we're just starting to get our first orders for rebuild kits from uh, Chase and Company. Demonstrate how to get that done. So before we get started, I just wanted to point out a couple of the tools that you're going to need for the job. We've got a quarter inch nut drive. A T27 star drive, T25 star drive, a torque wrench that uh, measures in inch pounds. You may need a uh, ratchet wrench, gasket puller, dust brush, uh, just a little bottle of Progressive W40, um, a set of uh, screws, and of course the rebuild kit from Chase Company. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and uh, dust off the compressor and uh, just, just kind of keep things from falling in it. If you start pulling it apart, it's a good idea to some good housekeeping and you can brush off the big stuff. The next thing we're going to do is uh, squirt a little bit of the WD-40 in the screws here. We're going to go ahead and pull out our T25 star drive. Give it a little wiggle, let that salt kind of soak in there. Alright, now we're going to remove all these head screws. This time it's also a good idea to go ahead and change the air filter. As you can see, this one's quite dirty. The kit comes with a new air filter inside. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, retainer for the leaf valve using a quarter inch nut drive. that retainer and we're going to get rid of the leaf valves then we're going to remove the flapper valves on the bottom side these ones don't have retainers now take note the valves on the bottom side of the head plate here are bent and that's a specification that we have uh, uh, done at the factory and it allows the compressor to restart under pressure that's a very important feature in an air AC system. So we've gone ahead and removed all of the leaf valves off the head plate. And it's a good idea just to go ahead and dust that out a little bit, just in case there's any dust in there. We don't want it to uh, be abrasive on the new uh, cylinders and cup seal. We'll do that to both sides. I forgot to mention in the beginning that you'll actually need a 1 8 inch uh, Allen key as well uh, to pull these screws off the side, discard the cup seal. So now that we've got the compressor disassembled, we're going to go ahead and start rebuilding. So the first thing we want to do is put the uh, cylinder 
over the, over the piston. And go ahead and set your cup seal in there. You have your cup seal retainer. And you go ahead and just push it right on down into the cylinder. Now, the Nebo kit comes with two different types of uh, retainer screws. Um, they came with the round-headed ones, um, and then they also included these flat-headed. Since the pressures came from the manufacturer with the round-headed, I'm going to go ahead and use those. those screws down to 34 to 38 inch pounds. Uh, so I've got my torque wrench here set at 36 pounds. And I'm going to go ahead and start pushing it down. Now at this point I like to get push down on this piston to get this one to come up because uh, if it's maxed out at the bottom a lot of times the uh, sleeve will pop off and you got to start that whole process over again. So I like to get it somewhere uh, where this piston is somewhere in the middle of the stroke inside the, uh, the cylinder. And then we're going to go ahead and repeat that same process we just did. Now, uh, when we get to this point, we want to go ahead and uh, hold both cylinders down and push on the high one, on the high piston, and get the pistons in between strokes. What that's going to do is, uh, uh, sometimes with the, the new seals being so tight and a, uh, uh, both pistons being maxed up out on either their high or low stroke, it can uh, make it hard for the compressor to restart. So. Uh, by putting the, uh, uh, setting the pistons in between strokes so that they're even, it just allows for an easier startup. So the next step is to go ahead and reinstall the lead valves on the head plate. Uh, you'll notice I've got two different screws here. Um, one of the screws is a little bit longer than the other uh, because one is meant for the, the top lead valve and uh, one is meant for the lead valve that goes on the bottom of the head plate. Um, the one that goes on the top is a little longer, as you can see here, so we're going to set this one aside uh, for when we do the bottom. Now, when we install this lead valve, you'll notice that uh, there, there's a bit of a ramp on this retainer. We want to make sure that that ramp is facing downward. So we'll go ahead and uh, put our lead valve on there, put our screw through the hole. very easy to overdo it. And uh, use aluminum it slips out very easily and it's an expensive custom replacement. I've already got my torque wrench here set at 13 inch pounds. You probably want to hold on to that retainer. It has a tendency to want to spin. It's also important to point out that this lead valve that we're putting on the top side is the valve that is not bent. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the valve for the bottom, this is the valve for the top. You can see this one has a, a slight bend in it. So we want to make sure that we're using the, the straight valve on the top of the head plate. Again, we're going to go ahead and push that down to 13 inches. All right. 
right, so now to do the bottom of the plate, uh, we're going to use the bent leaf valve, the shorter screw. And you'll have to forgive me, I, I, I think I said to throw this little retainer out before um, some of the other kits uh, include these. This one apparently doesn't. In any case, moving on with uh, rebuilding the bottom of the head plate, um, you'll see it has this little notch in the bottom of it. Um, the orientation you want that to go is towards the back of the valve. So, something like that. down to 13 pins. So now it's time to uh, install the uh, O-ring gasket on the bottom side of the head plate. Sometimes these can be a little loose. If they are, you can uh, sit on them or put a little uh, silicone lubricant on them. that the orientation of the head plate are what it was before with the um, inlet and exhaust on the right hand side. Sometimes you'll have to uh, toggle the cylinders a little bit to make sure they seat properly. install the head plates. Now we want to be sure that we have these oriented in the right direction. As you can see there's little arrows on them that uh, tell you which way they go. So since this is the inlet side, uh, we want the air going in. This is the orientation. Now we're going to install the head screws. Now the head screws, uh, there's two different sizes here. Um, the short ones go on the inside and the long ones go on the outside. We'll go ahead and put those in there. This last one we want to make sure and thread it through the capacitor bracket. Now we want to refasten this and uh, these screws in a crisscross fashion. And again, we're just going to go this area of the string is tight, so we'll throw a uh, torque nut down. The torque specification for these head screws is 50 inch pounds. So I've already set my torque nuts here. 50 inch pounds. Pressure's rebuilt. Uh, let's go ahead and bench test this. We test the compression by sticking my thumb over the intake. Should suck your thumb good, make the motor bog down. As you can see here. That our rebuild is complete.